two pokes oh, for it doesn't look like summer. <laughs> two <laughs> pokes for ever. Okay, so <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Always. Just getting my stopwatch oh, okay. ready. Oh, is it my turn? Oh. <laughs> Uh -huh. I see a little bit here. My throat look okay? Uh, no, I don't know. I fine. Welcome back to Spoonsville. Hello. <laughs> Today is Two Popes Day. The day where we cover the two popes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2019 Anthony Hopkins, Jonathan Price. And now I'm given 20 seconds to explain the movie to you. No, it's me. It's my turn. Oh, yes. To explain. To summarize the uh, two-hour movie in 20 seconds. Good luck. Okay, am I starting I'm now? I'm for you. Yep. Uh, and... Yeah. Go. The movie follows Pope Benedict's attempt to get Pope Francis to take over as Pope. That's it. <laughs> Only had 10 seconds. Impressive. That's All it. Right. Yeah. yeah Mary, what else do you need to say, I suppose? That's, 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 the, that's it. the gist. Yeah. That is a gist. Yeah. I wanted a gist, you gave a gist. Yeah. It was a good gist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now we go more in depth. We take the yeah. gist and we expand on it. Um, I don't know. We haven't done this Let's in a while. Let's expound on your gist. <sighs> How did you feel when the credits started rolling? Um, I felt really happy. Mm. It was a very fulfilling movie. Mm. And another reflection piece. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've been watching a lot of reflection piece type of movies. Yeah. And... You seem drawn to them. Yeah. Like a fly to a slaughter. Like a moth to a flame. Yes, that's <laughs> what I said. Yeah. It was a beautiful movie. I guess Pope Benedict is much more conventional mm -hmm. and Pope Francis isn't. He's right. a very much more, I don't want to say new age. It's kind of like us, the skateboarding kind of Pope. Yeah. You know? And well, he also doesn't want to be Pope. He wants yeah. to resign as a priest of the Catholic Church, yeah. but Pope Benedict doesn't want him to do that. He actually wants him to take over yeah. as the Pope. Yeah, and so there are lots of things happening at that time. There's that scandal with yeah. the uh, Pope ben Benedict's assistant. Um, right. I think sexually Molesting harassing or, or molesting or laundering. Oh yeah, I think laundering. it has to be with the, yeah. Yeah, money laundering or yeah. something like that. But there was, of course, also as everybody know there's always been yeah. talk or issues with the catholic church yeah. that um pope benedict is also dealing with yeah right and um so that's basically it like you yeah. also get you get to see these two personalities mm -hmm. and um i think in the end it's very interesting because one is quite conventional and the other one is less conventional maybe more liberal or more new age mm -hmm. and yet you still i found for myself that i was still endeared to both of them mm -hmm. I think a lot of the times people have this notion of people who are conventional as maybe being, of course, sticklers for tradition, but also being closed off. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that, um, li yeah, living your life conventionally, I don't yeah. necessarily think that you're maybe emotionally closed off or yeah. less receptive to, to people mm -hmm. uh, that are different to you. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of potentially like the kind of upbringing you had and also the kind of environment you were socialized in that has like that dictates a certain kind of life for you and is difficult to change i think we all know that if you grow up in a certain environment or if you're so socialized in a certain environment it's hard for you to adjust to a different one but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are someone who's rigid mm -hmm. per se mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's a great part in the scene where are they having pizza at that point i can't remember yeah I think they're hanging out they're having wine or something they're eating something I think I remember there's that. Pizza. There's pizza. And, uh, and Ratzinger, or the Pope Benedict, Anthony Hopkins character, is, you know, he's like, oh, it's basically, it's nice to have someone around to hang out with. Basically, yeah. is what he says. He's like, because he gets lonely at the top. Yeah. Even the Pope, the top of the Pope. Pope yeah. I think sometimes we have, we look at people in certain positions of power and just, um, have this notion that they're very different from us but they're not you know they are human just like we are and they st have the same kind of struggles that we have a lot of times when you're in leadership sometimes you're forced what or when you're in a position of authority you know i mm -hmm. think sometimes you're kind of forced to portray this um understanding of everything and ne just the certainty and never show any vul vulnerability i think sometimes you're forced to do that or you feel like you're forced mm -hmm. to do that 
because a lot of the times people do have to put that kind of pressure on you. Mm -hmm. In a position of leadership, you expect that someone has all the answers, right? You don't expect, for example, if you go to the doctor, the doctor to say, well, I'm not really sure what's going on here. You know, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to go read a book and figure out. Mm -hmm. And realistically, a doctor doesn't know everything. Mm -hmm. They are going to have to sometimes yeah. go back to, the, yeah. you know, to their books or whatever. And even in leadership as well, like maybe political leadership, you hire certain people because you can't do everything. But it makes people feel secure. The idea of having an authority, that all-knowing figure, right, um, brings people, gives people security. Pope Benedict governs in that way, mm. with the conventional, in that conventional way of knowing that primarily people want you as a leader to be different, to have something to seemingly have something much more, mm -hmm. you know, to seem to have transcended like yeah. the normal human, the level of human interaction, yeah. like you know much more. Mm -hmm. And in order to make sure that people have that idea of you, you distance yourself from them mm -hmm. so that they don't see you being vulnerable yeah. just like they are. Yeah. You you never allow them to see that humane, that humanity mm -hmm. that makes you just like they are. And so you have dinner on your own because he had mm -hmm. dinner. And, but at the same time, he does want that emotional connection, which is where, when Pope Francis is visiting, he's like, he just wants to talk about mm -hmm. anything like, um, I don't know, like yeah, so music. They talk about sports. Yeah, they talk about sports, they talk about uh, music yeah. and things like that. And yeah. 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 It's a very funny movie. <laughs> what? What do you mean? It was. It was a funny movie. It was certainly not a comedy. It was a drama for yeah. sure. Yeah. But there were certain elements there that was that were nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it really presented the complexities of humanity right mm -hmm. like being yeah. a human being yeah. and living living within structures mm -hmm. right um i think the um pope benedict very much operates as a functioning cog of mm -hmm. the machinery that is the yeah. catholic church yeah. which is a massive cog which is massive. massive maybe you are a teacher for example you follow a certain curriculum you may not agree to it, right? You may feel like I would prefer, I wish I would be able to do ABC with my kids, but there's an entire system that is beyond you and you cannot afford to change and say, well, you know what? I'm not going to teach my students this because I do not believe in this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach them this. But the problem is when they go and write an exam, they're going to write an exam that is based on that hu that, that larger um, educational system. So you have to align your teaching with with the system that you are not necessarily in mm -hmm. agreement with because it's for the good of your kids mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. right maybe you have more like better knowledge that you could provide them but that knowledge that you could provide them they're not going to be tested on it so you have to give them the knowledge that isn't really going to help them out mm -hmm. and i think a lot of the times people when you're looking at a leader you are so quick a lot of us were very quick to criticize and vilify leaders mm -hmm. without really understanding um the complexities of leadership without really understanding that that person isn't a single entity. It's not like Pope uh, Benedict was here making all of these decisions, right? He's just someone, he's an usher for the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church has been in existence for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it is not something that you can just all of a sudden decide, okay, well, I'm in leadership that I'm gonna change it. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's really yeah. difficult. And so for me, I, ne I, I think when people were calling uh, the Pope Benedict, oh, a Nazi or whatever. They were doing that with the idea that, okay, well, he's the one governing. Mm -hmm. He's the one in charge of the Catholic Church. Yeah. Like, if you're a priest, you're in charge. And that's yeah. not the case. Yeah. But and, humans yeah. always need a face to put, you know, to, to attack on all the things going on. You yeah. know, the policies. It's how, you know, you can't memorize everyone's name that's responsible in an institution for making something happen. You just need a face to blame everything on, you know, yeah. it's yeah. just easier. It saves time, I guess. Yeah. It saves brain power. But yeah, and, and there's, so, there's so many great, uh, great themes in the movie. It's a, a lot of it's kind of a debate on how much of tradition needs to be upheld because you need certain foundations for humans to function and to make sense of the world and to have a certain sense of truth and, you know, um, reason uh, to base things around, and then how much of it you need to be fluid and allow to other influences to come in and maybe new ideas or, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of their debate is uh, the, the great scene where Pope Francis 
is saying, well, you know, we didn't even have um, angels till what, the 5th century? Mm -hmm. And we didn't even have the idea that priests had to be celibate till like the 12th century. So we're kind of making stuff up too. So, you know, we could also always change things like that. It's not static. You know, we like to believe it is. It's also uh, when a, a machine, a system, uh, an institution is faced with declining membership, for example. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Is it... You know, do you blame, do you blame modern society, you know, pop culture on people becoming immoral and decadent? And really, we don't need to change because it's just other people losing their way. Or is it, I mean, you could, you could stay in that stance all you want, but don't you also want to hold on to your constituents? Well, maybe, you know, maybe it's worth at least allowing for a little more inclusivity, things like that, you know? And that's kind of what people are dealing with all the time in everyone's own life. It's how much do I hold on to how my family did things growing up, how, you know, community did things, how, whatever, the views on, on, on your country and everything, how much do you hold on to the things and then how what, what things should be tweaked or completely thrown out. So what the two popes are going through there is what happens in everyone's mind as they go through life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everyone has a slightly different change, compromise, balance of the two. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that really stood out for me in that in the movie is the experience of these two people. Um, Pope Benedict talks about how he, all he did, was, he was a very studious kid and mm -hmm. he never actually, he read a lot, right? He's book smart, but he never actually experienced life. Mm -hmm. Whereas Pope Francis did experience life. Like he was also, he, he almost got married. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so he has just that much more, I think, I guess, more of a tangible understanding of, um, human beings, diverse, mm -hmm. di diversity in human needs, human desires mm -hmm. and complexity. Whereas I think Pope, uh, Benedict doesn't necessarily have that, which doesn't mean that he isn't someone who's available to, or open to differing views. It just means that he has a weakness, I would say. Mm. I think there, um, there is a difference between hu people who are conventional because they are rigid and then pe and, and people who are conventional because they weren't exposed. Mm. And I think for me, when I'm looking at that, I find that Pope Benedict was conventional because he didn't have that kind of exposure. And I say that because I look at when he's interacting with Pope Francis, right. he's so, it looks like he's, complete he's been deprived so long yeah. of that emotional and um connection that we all want with people because he was just always fo so focused on uh finding us achieving a certain goal since he was a kid mm -hmm. and so when you're doing all of those th those things a lot of the times you are sacrificing a lot of good pure hum human interactions right and so you can see that he's starved of it um as much as he does he has that convention that he's kind of imprisoned by still but he doesn't necessarily like it he does want that kind of that human connection that you see when he does get it with this person who's so rich mm. in like it's life experience worldview. and yeah like emotional connect connection yeah. Yeah. i think that guy that the pope francis pope francis mm -hmm. is when you see when you when he meets someone that yeah. has that empathy yeah. and is that vulnerable and yeah. is so open yeah. about his vulnerability yeah. That is something that he's like, oh my God, yeah. you know, he's attracted to that. And I mean, I, I, to be honest, like really when I'm looking at it, I don't feel like Pope Benedict, really. I, 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 I feel endeared to both of these guys, mm -hmm. to, bo to Pope Benedict, because I think he was just a gentle person who was starved of that, just the raw emotional connection that we all want. Mm -hmm. And I, I say that because when you, when they finally, when he finally, when he's interacting with Pope Francis, you just see him just come to life, you mm -hmm. know, and just, it seems that he's finally getting this thing that he was thirsting for, mm -hmm. you know, that depth of engagement with another human being mm -hmm. that he's thirsting for and does not feel that he can find or source from other people because he's a leader. Mm -hmm. And he has that idea that as a leader, you know, like you yeah. have to present in a certain way mm -hmm. and you can't show vulnerabilities. You have to know to show that you're independent and you don't need anything. Mm -hmm. But then with this guy, he, he can be that way, especially because I think Pope, Fran Pope Francis just 
there are certain people that kind of make you feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and to just allow yourself to melt in that. Yeah. People, a lot of the times, tend to hide who the parts of themselves that make it make them more vulnerable and less incredible or profound, you know, in the eyes of other people. Of course, this is also always a lot of the times a perception because I think if people portray their fallibility, as far as I know, as far as in my personal experience, we are all fallible, right? And if someone is is okay or portrays that to me, it makes me feel like they're much more confident. I respect someone who owns up mm-hmm. to their fallibility more than someone who tries and say and says that they are completely perfect and they never make any mistakes. So I think because Pope Benedict is in this institution, this conventional institution that makes him feel like he has to hide his vulnerabilities um, or the things that might make people feel like, oh, you're not made, cut out to be a leader. Him seeing or experiencing this guy, Pope Francis, who's he doesn't care about that stuff. Who's like, yeah, I am a human being and I make mistakes and I have, this is what I do. I, 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 I like, you know, I go and I dance and I tango or whatever. And I do dance with other people with a partner, you know, which is of course, Pope Benedict asks him that because he's like, well, you're a Catholic priest. You shouldn't be doing that. But he's like, yeah, I do do that. Right. So when he does uh, these things and interacts with Pope Benedict in that way, it kind of chips away at those walls that Pope Mm -hmm. Benedict, I think, has been forced to build, Mm -hmm. not because he wants to, but Mm -hmm. because of the nature of his job Mm -hmm. and the Catholic institution. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's for me, I I liked the relationship between these two people because Mm -hmm. they were giving to each other in a way that I think sometimes is, is, um, can be, can be really, really rewarding when you have wanted that kind of connection with people and you Mm -hmm. haven't been allowed to have it. Yeah. And then you meet a person who just says, here, I am I am here. You can be all of that with yeah. me. Yeah. I, I felt like yeah. that was the relationship. Totally. Scenes that stood out to you. Off the top of my chin, there are some really beautiful <laughs> ones that I can think of. Like, again, like the one that you reminded me of where at the end when he's leaving, he, he you know, reluctantly at first gets Pope Benedict to dance with them. He's like, oh, no, I, I don't. I don't dance. And then they, 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 they do this. Oh, and yeah. It's really I great. That. And he leaves. And then, you know, Pope Benedict's kind of like. I think they have a hug. He comes in for a hug and he's kind of yeah. like awkwardly kind of, you can see he's like, oh, okay, yeah, he kind of misses him. Um, I like the scene where, again, he's, he's like, oh, well, you play something on the piano, you know? And he's, he's playing a song. He's like, it's an old German hymn, I think he says, you know? And then and, and, and Pope Francis is listening to it and he's really enjoying it. They, they talk about the Beatles. Uh, he oh, yeah. recorded his album on Abbey Road, but he doesn't remember where he's like, Abbey Road? Like, yeah, okay, where? Well, I don't really. Um, he didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I like how that conversation when he, in the flashback, when he approaches the priest saying, you know what, um, you know, he's like, do you know what you're giving up? And he's like, yeah, I, I was going to marry a woman and I got the calling to become a priest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, that's genuine when it seemed like he, he was really in love with this person and still decided, no, this, you know, I can't ignore this, you know? And, and then the last one I'll say is, is, um, when Pope Benedict you know, again, he talks about not being able to hear God anymore, and he asks for forgiveness once he has switched the Pope, being the Pope to Pope Francis, and, and Pope Francis does his, uh, hears his um, confessions and absolves him, you know? The whole movie is amazing. It was such a beautiful depiction of the stuff that really, that he, people need to actually, to truly live. Mm. I think living it involves having relationships with people and relationships where you can you're really truly uh connecting on an emotional level and by that i mean a lot of times you can be spending time with people you you go out let's go hiking let's go to a club let's go to a pub let's go to the movies these are all just things that we do but the most important thing and i think the thing that people really need the most is an emotional connection and for me, that this movie was that. Uh, it was just seeing that with these two people. I wonder when, if when people watch these kinds of movies. Obviously, this is based on a true story, a story, but of course, there's also the fictional mm-hmm. aspect of things. But I always wonder how other people watch movies. If you're watching this movie, do you um, reflect on your own self, your own life, or do you, are you just looking at this, you know, as something that is distant from you because? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think everyone does it a little differently. I believe that a hundred people will watch a movie in a theater, and a hundred there'll be a hundred different opinions of the movie after. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. The movie in general is, for me, something that, a reminder that when you're assessing people's um, conduct, to never view them in um, isolation, like sympathizing mm-hmm. with someone else's experience, even if they are they have a completely different worldview or completely yeah. different yeah. ideology. It takes a lot of energy, though, to take off your own shoes and then find someone else's shoes and see if you can squeeze into them. Yeah. It's tough. A lot of people want to put their energy elsewhere, but it's important to be able to switch shoes now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Two pokes <laughs> for it doesn't look like summer. It. <laughs> Two <laughs> pokes for ever. Okay. So. Beautiful movie. 10 out of 10. Both actors Great acting. are fantastic. Yeah. What was the other guy's name? Jonathan, Jonathan Price? Jonathan Price, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know he, his Spanish. Is yeah. it Spanish that he was speaking? Yeah. Well, I spoke good. a couple languages, yeah. Yeah, extremely impressed. I wonder if he knew it before, if he, was, if he learned it for the movie. I don't know, but wow. I was incredibly in awe. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins. Of course. Of course. That's why we watched it. <laughs> that's why you watched it. And maybe that's... I don't know, you know, maybe the the real Pope Benedict isn't quite as like, well, I think it helps that Anthony Hopkins is just so great that yeah. it, that helps wanting to warm up to Rat Singer. But yeah. either either case, uh, yeah, beautiful movie. Fantastic. Yeah. So, what very, you, what very you, fantastic. Have you seen The Two Popes? Have any of you seen The Two Popes? Are we Will the anyone ones? ever comment? Will any, <laughs> let us know what you think. And uh, let us know uh, if we're on the right track. Yeah. If we got some... So we got the right idea about them popes. Yeah. yeah. So 10 out of 10 ripe tomatoes. Yeah. Till then. Till later. Goodbye. Till tomorrow. Till next later time. this week. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.